two minutes to walk along a path A, B, C, D, E. I think my diagram may not be accurate because the arrows shifted. Okay, so um, ignore the arrows over here. It should look like this. Uh, point A over here to B to C. Ah, okay, never mind. Okay, point A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, now what is the average speed? The distance for each side will be 5 meters. So to find the average speed, I require total distance. over total time and I know that he used two minutes okay because he used two minutes I know the time is going to be two minutes however if you notice all of the units over here for the speed they are in seconds what do you think I need to do with the two minutes I change to seconds okay two times 60 okay that is our denominator in our numerator how many sides of the squares did he go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 sides multiplied by 5. So we get a total of 90 divided by 1, 2, 0, which is 3 over 4. Do you have an error? So this uh, is not 90. We should have 80. Cancel, cancel. So we've got divided by 4, no, um, 2 and 3. Okay, so we get approximately 0 0.66. So therefore, out of all these options, only C gives us the correct answer. I'm quite sure that that'll be the answer already. But let me just double check using velocity. Because velocity will now be the average, the total displacement over total time. And the displacement in this case, since I started at A and I ended at A, therefore the total, the overall displacement is actually zero. Now next for question 5. Okay, he ran at an average speed of 8 meters per second. Does that mean that he is always constantly at 8 meters per second? At the start, what do you think his speed was? Very good, because everybody starts from rest, right? Before the, the um, signal is given, So if you will start to build up the speed, if we say that the speed is increasing, we call that acceleration. He's increasing his speed, he's accelerating. Then he's going to run so fast, he runs as fast as he can, his maximum speed, that will be a concern. Do you think his maximum speed is greater than, or equal to, or less than eight? What do you think? His maximum speed? Greater. What do you think it is greater? That's a very good explanation. He has to make up for the starting speed. Because the starting speed was zero, then it slowly increased to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. He has to make up for the starting slow speed. So that overall, on an average, he gets eight meters per second. So that is the situation. Therefore, uh, we can state that he started the race lower than 8 meters per second, that is correct. Next, he ran uh, higher than 8 meters per second at some point in the race, that is correct also. And the third one, he ran at a constant speed of 8 meters per second, that cannot be. Okay? Because it says throughout, so this one is wrong. Therefore, answer is 1 and 2 only.
If there are any questions that you have, you must stop me and ask. Otherwise, I'll just keep moving on. Huh? Okay, question six. Two similar tennis balls, they are released from a tower at the same time. One falls from the top, the other falls from halfway up as shown. So you need to understand the situation. It is like uh, somebody is, what level are we at? Between tree and ground level, there's second level, right? Somebody sticks out the hand with a tennis ball. Somebody at level two sticks out the hand with a tennis ball. So same tennis ball. And we're going to drop them both at the same time. And of course, both of them will reach the floor at, uh, at some point in time, right? Which ball will reach first? Now, you don't care about this question. Just talk about normal, what we experience in real life. Obviously, the one who drops it from second power, the ball will reach the ground first, right? Is there a way that we can make the ball from the third level reach first? Is there a way that we can do that? How? Throw harder. What do you mean by throw harder? So you throw it down this way, right? As compared to second level, that person just drops. You get it? Is that what, what exactly are we changing when we say a person just drop the ball versus a person who throws it out? What is the difference? Speed. What kind of speed? The person at the same level, if it drops the ball, what is the initial speed? What is the starting speed? Zero. But for you, when your arm does this, you are already giving it speed, right? You are already giving it speed that you release, the starting speed is already higher. That is the difference. And there is therefore a chance for the ball from the third level to reach the ground faster. Okay, but in this case, we are just talking about releasing. Releasing is just drop. So initial speed is zero. Uh, we neglect air resistance. We pretend there is no air, it is just a vacuum. Which one can be considered the same for both of the balls? I'm going to include, uh, just going to ask you to consider this. Uh, option E, for example. Both of these balls, they started with the same speed of zero meters per second. Is that correct? Is that correct? Both of them started at the same speed of 0 meters per second. Yeah, that's correct. What about one second later? What happens to the speed of the ball from the third level where we are at? What happens one second later? What happens to the speed? Increase, decrease, or same? Who thinks that the speed increases after one second? After one second, we release it inside. Speed increase, okay. Uh, what about those who think that the speed stays the same? Inside. Okay, and those who think that the speed decreases inside. So nobody thinks that the speed will decrease. Okay, now rewind up. When I'm at the third level, I release, what is the speed? When I release, what is the speed? Zero. When you say that the speed stays the same after one second, what are you saying the speed is? Zero. Can the speed be still zero after one second? If the speed is zero, then it's zero. That's what you say there. But it cannot be ma, it has to draw right, it has to gain speed. Therefore, we say that after one second, the speed will increase. We say that it is accelerating down, but how much is the increase? So at zero seconds, the speed is zero. After one second, what is the new speed? This is known as acceleration due to free fall. 10 meters per square second, remember this value? G is 10 meters per square second. We also call it 10 newtons per kg. These are equivalent. But when we talk about acceleration, when we talk about speed, we will use this one. When we talk about conversion from mass to weight, we use this. Okay? So recap for your acceleration. 10 meters per square second implies that every one second the speed increases by 10 meters per second. This is what it means. So now, I've got a master. Okay, this is my original level. I'm going to release it. One second later, will it still be up here? It will be somewhere here, right? 
so this over here is the height. It started from here. Um, it drops after one second. The speed is 10 meters per second, right? After one second, the speed is 10 meters per second. After two seconds, do you think the distance travel is longer or shorter? Longer, because now it's moving faster. So, this part over here, two sec uh, another one second, but the speed is now 20 meters per second. It's going faster. For the same one second, it travels more and more. We call it accelerating. Just like you think of the bus. It starts from, from zero, then it starts to accelerate. It starts to go faster and faster. At different points in the journey, for the same one second, we are traveling a greater distance. That's what's happening over here. So now, I've got two objects. One is raised higher, the other is raised lower. Let's pretend that these two are the same thing. Huh? I'm going to drop them both at the same height. I'm going to release them. After one second, it should look something like this, right? What is the speed of this object after one second? 10 meters per second. How about this one? Also 10. After two seconds, it's going to look like this, right? What is the speed of this one? 20. How about this one? Still 20. For the same duration in time, the speed is going to be the same. But this is going to reach the fourth one. Okay, so in this case, we have the answer as A. The speed after 1.5 seconds will be the same. I use the simple values, 1 second, 2 seconds, 1.5 also the same. 100 seconds also the same, assuming they haven't reached the floor yet. Alright? Okay, so the next one. Car traveling initial speed of 20 km per hour. So initial is the starting, accelerates to 100 km per hour in 8 seconds. What is the acceleration of the car? So which formula do you think we should be using over here? Uh, acceleration. What is the formula for acceleration again? A equals to V minus V minus U over T. Where V is the, is the final speed, U is the original speed. And divided by the time taken. Okay? So now, what is the final speed? What's the final speed? 100 kilometers per hour. 100 kilometers per hour. And what is the original speed? 20 kilometers per hour. And we divide this by the time taken. How much time was taken? 8 seconds. Over here, 8 seconds. So if you do this working, uh, you're going to definitely get it wrong already. You know why? Why? So, so which one is correct? The seconds is correct or wrong? Should I be using seconds? Should I be using seconds? How do we decide? Because some of you are going to say, hey, I can use seconds, but I change the speed. Some of you may say, hey, I use the correct, uh, I use kilometers per hour, but I change the seconds to hours. So which one is correct? And how do we decide? You may say seconds, but how do we decide? I look at the options in the answers. All these are in meters per square second. Therefore, we need to change all our units to meters and seconds. So the denominator stays. Now, 100 kilometers per hour. When I convert 100 kilometers per hour to meters per second, are you able to do this? Sure, you can. So Tom is saying that we keep this as 100 kilometers per hour. Then you subtract, and we get 80 kilometers per hour. So we he just wants to convert it once. Sure. 80 kilometers per hour to meters per second. Have you done the conversion? If you haven't, use this time now to convert. So answer A over here. Next, unbalanced force. 
So we learn that forces can be balanced and they can be unbalanced. Examples of balanced forces could look like this. 10 newtons over here and I've got 2 newtons and 8 newtons. So this over here, they are balanced. Left hand side, 10. Right hand side, 10. Same. Balanced. Unbalanced forces could look like this. 20 newtons. So now, for my example, can you tell me what is the resultant force? For my example. 10, 10, what? No, we just said only. 10 newtons. To the right, yes, I need direction. So this is a quick recap. And now, let's look at the scenarios. A baseball hit by a bat. When I hit a baseball with a bat, it experiences forces, okay? And it starts to accelerate. Um, this, in this case, when you hit a baseball with a bat, it starts to go faster. It accelerates. Therefore, forces are unbalanced. Okay, now at this point in time, you should be wondering, hey, I don't remember Mr. Wong teaching about this one. Eh? It is accelerating, therefore, forces are, are unbalanced. You are right. I didn't teach you this. Because this is not in your syllabus this year. So, let's remove this question. Okay, you, you shouldn't have been able to do it. Lah. But if you did, it just means that you have you read in advance or you got, it, lah. You got lucky. Okay? Okay, now, question 9. Uh, question 9 is also not in your syllabus. So, cross it out. Question 10 also, not in your syllabus. We just, we just um, made some changes. A student wanted to determine the diameter of a Singapore 50 cent coin. Everybody saw 50 cent coin before. You want to de de determine the diameter. This person uh, used a meter rule to measure it. Is it a good idea? Is it a good idea to use a meter rule? Why not? Uh? I'm not precise. Uh. What if my, my ruler right, has a very high precision? Let's say it's got very high precision. It cannot. How? If you have a coin, right? Can you out a coin and you pick out your ruler? Are you able to tell where is the diameter? Why not? That is the situation. Now, part A. There are some mistakes made with the measurement re measurement recorded. Where are the mistakes? Is there a problem with reading number one? What is the problem with reading number one? It's fine, is it? Why do you think it's okay now? What's use meter rule then? No need to be so specific. That, which one is very, okay, the word you should be using is precise. Huh? Out of reading number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which one is very precise? 2, 3, and 5, 
Super eyesight from a ruler. It is 25.0 mm. My eyesight can tell me that the reading is 25.1 mm. You take out the ruler, you see the, li the little division over there? Can you break that small division of 1 mm into 10 microbats? You cannot. Your eyes are not good enough. The middle rule is not precise enough. So, what can you tell me about this person's uh, readings number 2, 3, and 5? Eyes mountains. He cannot write that because it is not precise enough. The best he can do will be 25, uh, reading number 1. 25, reading number 4. Okay? So identify all records with a mistake. Record, uh, that will be reading number 2, 3, and 5. These are the ones with the mistakes. So explain the mistake. We say that the recorded measurements can only be up to nearest 1 mm because precision of meter Rule is 1 mm. Then in part B, um, like I mentioned at the start, the middle rule is not suitable. Suggest a suitable instrument. So we can use a vernier calipers. The reason is because it's, there are two answers that I accepted. First one, like I mentioned, it's JAWS allow <coughs> us to measure the diameter accurately. As compared to the ruler, the ruler cannot cannot uh, help us identify where the diameter is. So this is one possible answer. Or we say that the um, vernier calipers has higher precision than meter rule. So these are the two that I will accept. Yeah, I well, accept that. So it's the same as my option one. Nah. Right, then we see uh, this person, he actually repeated his calculation, uh, his measurements five times. If I ask you to measure the diameter of a 50 cent coin with a vernier calipers, how many times do you want to measure? Normally, normal human being. Ask you to measure, you measure how many times? Yeah. Measure one time, right? One time can already. I want to measure so many times. But because this is for physics, it is an experiment. We want to be very sure that our answers are, are reliable. So we repeat it. We repeat it, and in this case, the person repeated it five times. So the reason is because by taking the average, The experimental error, E-X-P-E-R-I-M-E-N-T-A-L error is minimized by spreading over five measurements which gives a more 
accurate result. Similarity between scalar and vector. Both have? Okay, both have magnitude. Okay, what about the difference? Can I say uh, one has direction, the other doesn't? Must stay lah. Because if you write it this way, right, when I mark, I think hey, this person probably doesn't know which one has direction. He is trying to uh, take his chances, see whether I'm linear or not. But too bad I'm not linear, I will give it a wrong. You must state which one has direction. So which one has direction? A uh, vector has direction, huh? Vector have direction, but scalars do not. Okay, give an example of a scalar and a vector. Okay, mass and force. Okay, any others you want me to check? Okay, distance, displacement. Okay, speed, velocity, any more? Any more that you want me to check? Huh? No, it doesn't have to be a pair like that. Any more? I can put weight here, right? I can put acceleration. A C C E L E R A T I O N. There's also time over here. Any more that you want to check? Or is this enough? Enough already, uh, whatever you need to cover, they are here already. Okay, next. Two cars last 400 meters. This is the last part of the race already. Last 400 meters. Car A is moving at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. Car B starts to accelerate from rest. Maybe car B for some reason uh, uh, got into an accident, so it is stationary. Whereas car A is already moving at 20 meters per second. 20 meters per second is really fast. Can you imagine? In one second, uh, you are traveling from one end of the classroom to the other end of the classroom. About 20 meters. That's really fast, right? One second. Okay? Now, in an attempt, to cross the finishing line first. Car B, if you are the driver in car B, you don't want to lose to car A who is in front of you who is already traveling at 20 meters per second. What will you do? You will accelerate. You have no choice but to accelerate. Do you accelerate a little bit or do you press all the way up? You just push the car with as much power it has. So you accelerate as fast as possible and you hope that you will Eventually, go past. In other words, go one thing, car A. So you will catch up. So car A is moving on. You want to catch up. And eventually, car C will overtake him before the finishing line. Okay? So now, car B is accelerating at 5 meters per square second. We need to have a good understanding of what this 5 meters per square second means. In the when 5 equals to 0 second, what is car A, car B's speed when time is 0? At the start, what was his speed? Car B. Eugene, what is the speed of car B at the start? 0 meters per second, you must speed the units also. Huh? And what happens to his speed 1 second later? What is his speed 1 second later? Ian. Five. Ah, good. Now he has a uh, unit. Five meters per second at the 
6 seconds. That is for car B. Uh, if he took 12.6 seconds to finish everything, did he win car A? Yes. Uh. And the question is, how long did car A take? 15 seconds. Car A within 300 meters, traveling at 20 meters per second. We need to determine the time taken for car A. So, your working cannot be just numbers. Uh. You cannot just write 300 over 20 equals to 15. Then uh, your answer is car B. Cannot. This one will give you zero marks. You need to write down what you are calculating. Time for A to finish equals to, so our pyramid, what we learned in primary school still applies. Uh, distance, speed, and time. If I want the time, I, make, I take distance divided by speed. A needs to travel 300 meters divided by the speed of 20. 20 meters per second. So we arrive at 15 seconds. So car A still required 15 seconds to finish, whereas car B only required 12.6 seconds. So the car that crossed the finishing line first is actually B. At some point, it actually overtook. So the next part, calculate the speed at which car B crosses the finishing line. What is the formula that links final speed? This is final speed versus initial speed, which we found was uh, 0 meters per second. And then we've also got acceleration, which is, um, what was it? 5 meters per square second. What is the formula that links everything up? Plus the time. Equals to 12.6 seconds, right? Okay, so what formula links everything up? Acceleration. Is it the same formula as we used earlier on? Same one, right? So we say that A equals to B minus U over T. It's been some time since we used this formula, huh? and um, from the start of the year until now, you learn, you should be quite good at algebra already, right? Yes? Quite good at algebra. Who's your uh, math teacher? Mr. Stan. Yeah, I'll be Stan. Mr. Stan. Okay. So, I will give her feedback. Huh? Which is our unknown in this equation? Is it A, V, U, or T? Which is the unknown? A is 5 meters per square second. A is not an unknown. V. V is the unknown over here. Okay, so have you all learned how to make uh, unknown the subject of the formula? 
make subject, you all learn already? Learn or haven't learned yet? So now I want V to be the subject. So I want to multiply both sides by T. So I get A T equals to V minus U. Right? Multiply both sides by T, I get A T on left hand side. On right hand side, no more, no more T already. So I want V. So I plus U on both sides. A T plus U equals to V. So now I want to find V. Substitute in everything. V equals to acceleration A times 12.6. Um, plus the initial speed, which is 0. A, A was 5, right? So 5 times 12.6 plus 0. And I get the answer as 63 meters per second. He crossed at 63 meters per second. Is that possible? 63 meters per second. It's really, really fast. I don't know how, uh, whether this is possible or not lah, um, for our cars. But anyway, for the question, we've got 63. Now, if you feel that your maths is not very strong, you're not too sure about all this making the subject, don't worry. I teach you another way. Just substituting the values inside. A is, we, we don't have to care about all this, huh? A is 5, right? The correct question. V is the unknown. U is 0. T is 12.6. So V minus 0 is simply V. Now I want the value of V. I multiply both sides by 12.6. So 5 times 12.6 equals to V, which is 63 meters per second. Okay? So I believe that's all for this question. Oh no. Uh, oh, next part. Explain the term average speed. Before we explain what average speed is, I need to realize that this is a definition kind of question. It could be defined average speed. Then I always tell you that um, there, are, there is a, a definition, there is also a formula. What is the formula for average speed? Average speed, total distance. Over total time. So this over here is the formula, which all of you can apply very easily. Then how do we explain what is average speed? So we say that what's our average speed is the total distance. Divided by total time. This one need to memorize one. Do you need to memorize this definition when you have already memorized that? No need. So link your studies together. Link your definition and formula together. Okay, here we have a scenario. A plane starts to fly from X to Z at 9 a.m. This is at uh, 9 a.m. Then it stopped for an hour at Town Y to pick up more passengers. Okay. Then it arrived, oh wait, when it went to point Y, how long did it stay there? One hour. One hour. Okay, now it arrived at town Z at 12.30. The flight paths and distances are shown. Okay, tell me what is the total time taken to go from X to Z? How much? 3 hours 30 minutes, yes. It took a total of 3 hours 30 minutes. Now listen to my question now. Huh? How long was the plane in the air? What's the total time the plane was in the air? No or don't know? Don't know or can calculate? Can calculate, right? How long was it on the ground at Y? One hour. It was on the ground at Y for one hour. So total time in flight is actually 2 hours 30 minutes. While this may not 
be the question uh, in the exam. It is still useful for you to think through all these things to know, appreciate what is happening. So now calculate the average speed and we use the formula on the board. Total distance divided by total time. Right now average speed equals total distance over total time. Check your partner's work. If they did not write th this down, make sure they are doing their corrections and they write it down. Let me check your partner's work. It cannot just be numbers divided by number. Ah. So here total distance is actually 200 plus 250 divided by the time taken is um, 3 hours 30 minutes. So now in terms of kilometers per hour, my numerator is already in kilometers. My denominator, is it in terms of hours? 3 hours 30 minutes, is that in hours? Not exactly, that 30 minutes. How do we convert 30 minutes to hours? 0 0.5. So what is my denominator now? Yes, 3.5 hours. Good. So calculator, uh, 550 divided by 3.5, I get... Oh no, it's 450. 450 divided by 3.5 and I get 128.57. Round off to how many SF? What did your maths teacher tell you? How many SF? 3. Same for physics, 3 SF. So this becomes 129 kilometers per hour. Can I have a show of hands? How many of you got this correct? Round off value of 129. Show of hands. Raise up high, please. Okay, thank you. Put it down. Can I just check? How many of you did this as the working? Average speed is um, 450 divided by 2.5. Anybody did this? 450 divided by 2.5? Ah, okay. So this is a very common mistake. Don't be ashamed of it. But you must learn now. Why did they put 2.5 instead of 3.5? That's here. Okay, some people, may, okay, not some people, many students actually make this mistake during the exams, even though they study. They know that it is supposed to be total distance divided by total time. So why is it that they write 2.5 hours as the denominator? Uh, because they think it is line time. But we say that it is total time. Total time, you must literally take this to mean total time. Total time includes the time that the plane was on the ground. It includes the time that the pilot went to the toilet. All the delays, that is not the total time. Okay? So learn from it, huh? So calculate the average velocity next. Average velocity. We now have total displacement. Divided by total time. And normally we don't really call it total displacement. We just simply call it displacement, okay? So whether you want to have this word or don't have this word is fine. Now what is the displacement from starting point to the ending point? X is the start. Z is the end. 400 kilometers, yes. So here we have 400. And what is the time taken? Still the same, 3.5. And we get 400 divided by 3.5. 114.28. Then we round off to 3SF again, 114 kilometers per hour. Because like I said, there were some changes made to the syllabus. What we wanted to cover. Draw a free body diagram of the object in the space below, indicating the frictional force. Now, if I don't, uh, if I don't care about this frictional force, what? How do I always start a free body diagram? Box. Yes. Please don't draw a circle. Huh? Box means box. So draw a box. 
Okay, all of you have a box. Then, um, where is this box? It is on a rough surface. Do I need to draw the rough surface? Do I need to draw the ground? Like that? Need or no need? No need. Because free body diagram means it is free of everything. I only want the box. Nothing else can be drawn. You cannot draw somebody's uh, hand over here, pushing it. Cannot. You cannot draw um, air resistance blowing over here. Cannot. Yes. Hang on, ah. Uh. 15C. An object uh, undergoes free fall from rest. So from rest, I want you to circle it, put down initial speed equals to fill in the blank. How much is it? Zero. Zero meters per second. And now we have an object uh, dropping down. Does this 10 kg actually matter? Do you think the 10 kg affects the speed after 3 seconds? Does it? All that we have been talking about just now, huh? acceleration due to free fall. 10 meters per square second. No longer on the board. Already over here. G equals to 10 meters per square second. Means that every second the speed increases by 10 meters per second. Did I talk about the weight? Did I talk about the mass? Never. So it is the same as these two again are my favorite two objects. Do they have the same mass? Assuming they are made of the same top of the field, do they have the same mass? No, I just do not so that so the mass be greater. Let's yeah. drop both of them at the same time. They should reach at the same time. The mass doesn't matter. Even if I take your AD school back, I I drop them both at the same time. They should reach the ground at the same time, assuming there's no air resistance. Okay? Uh, you might have seen this quite famous demonstration. Somebody take a bowling ball and somebody take a feather, then they drop them both at the same time. Which one reaches the floor first? Which one reaches the floor first? If I do the same experiment in the classroom right now, one feather and the bowling ball both drop. Which one reaches the floor first? So. Let us try. Uh, instead of a feather, I'm going to use this piece of paper. Instead of a volleyball, I use my handphone. Oh. Of course, I'm not going to use my handphone. I'm going to use a cluster. Okay, and I'm going to drop both of them at the same time. Huh? You see, we shall reach the ball first. Because according to what we have learned, they should reach at the same time, isn't it? It doesn't matter about the mass. Actually, the mass doesn't matter. The thing is, 
is that air resistance and is it significant? Remember your significant figures, right? if it is significant means it is important. In physics, we use the same word significant. Is air resistance significant or not? Is, is friction significant or not? If we don't say, you can treat it as insignificant. Insignificant means not important, it's negligible. We can ignore it. Okay, so in this case, we ignore air resistance and therefore the speed will be we use the same one again, A equals to B minus U over T. Same formula. I want the speed after 3 seconds. I want this V over here. So I'm substituting values. 10, which is the acceleration over here, equals to V minus 0 over 3. Therefore, V equals to 30 meters per second. 30. I know some of your mental sounds very good. You look at the question. You look at the question and you can tell me, hey, after one second, the speed becomes 10 meters per second, after two seconds, it becomes 20 meters per second, after three seconds, it becomes 30 meters per second. Then you just write down 30 as the answer. You get zero mark. This is a two mark question. I need to see your working. I need to see substitution as such. All right? So the lesson will end here.